bring attention her way. She suffers from fibromyalgia and when possible uses marijuana to ease her severe pain, but can't in her apartment because she would be evicted. Sick people shouldn't have the additional worry and burden of maybe being homeless just in trying to medicate and take care of themselves. These demonstrators hope their protest clears the smoke around this issue that affects countless tenants too afraid to lose their affordable housing to speak out for themselves. In Southwest Washington, Q McRae, ABC 7 News. And marijuana could help fight America's opioid crisis. There are now two studies published today in JAMA Internal Medicine suggesting that legalizing medical marijuana can relieve chronic pain. Now that, the studies believe, would reduce dependence on prescription opioids. Researchers looked at opioid dependence in states where prescription marijuana has been legalized. Now to a Stormwatch 7 alert, a weather alert that is to our north. Don't let April fool you. Winter still fighting spring for control here. Snow falling across the northeast, even covering Yankee Stadium in a blanket of snow, canceling opening day there. The Pittsburgh Pirates also dealing with snow, sending an army of employees to shovel the field. <laughs> well, as one would expect, the kids at the 140th White House Easter egg roll didn't care about politics. They never do. It's funny how that works. They were there to make, you know, the fun of chasing their eggs around the yard and make some memories and hopefully get some candy. Lots of that out there. Trump's son, Barron, and the president's grandkids, they were also there, as were members of the cabinet who read Easter stories to some of the kids. All right, only a few days left. The cherry blossoms along the Tidal Basin are now at stage five. Whoop, whoop. The puffy white <laughs> stage is what it's called, meaning peak bloom is only four to five days away. So that means peak will probably come sooner than the most recent forecast of April 8th. So get yourself ready. And if you haven't been out there, I don't care if it's stage five, stage six. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're gorgeous. Is, was that the official uh, stage five sound, by the way? I'm going with the, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to lock that in. <laughs> that's, that's the that's, alert. That's, that's my that sound. That was the right. alert. The stage five alert. Exactly right. Yeah, it is beautiful. A couple of days. We're going to be watching Tuesday night and Wednesday for some winds to kick uh -oh. up. I mean, this time of year, when you have that peak, 80% or more for like a week, you, you don't want anything there to, to mess that up. So I don't like that the winds are coming in. Let me show you, though. There's a live look at the Jefferson Memorial, and you see the color right there uh, in front. Temperature-wise, it's a cool night for this time of year, into the upper 40s to about 50 degrees. Our numbers are not going to change much from where they are now going through the evening tonight. And so we're going to be watching that, keeping them in the 40s. Grab your light jacket before heading on out. You don't have to grab the umbrella. We should be fine there. Now, here's what's going on. Clouds and radar, just a few clouds floating on by, as well as some breaks in those clouds. We're dry tonight, but let me take you through. I'm going to keep your numbers on here, as well as the wind direction. So here we are at 11 o'clock. We have temperatures in the 40s, so it will be fairly mild. Watch as we go through the overnight hours. I stop this at 4. Temperatures don't move much. We kind of hang out in these 40s, but a few showers pushing through late tonight into early tomorrow morning. Should not be a big deal, not widespread, but as you make your way out, say 7 o'clock in the morning, we're close to where we are right now temperature-wise, so it will be a cool start, but we should be well above the freezing mark with a couple of showers around the region. The farther north you go, the better that chance is going to be for showers throughout the morning hours, but for the most part, we're all fairly dry for the morning. By tomorrow afternoon, we're into the, say, mid-50s. We watch some showers pass on by, so as the kids are going back to school, bus stop forecast for the way home. Showers are going to be uh, a better chance than not to pick them up around the area. Straight thunderstorm possible as well. And then we'll go up to about 60 degrees. Now notice, watch this. Here's 6 o'clock. Here's our temperature, say upper 50s to about 60. They hang there through 8 o'clock and even to 11. They may even go up tomorrow night. And that is because we have some winds that are working on in from the south. So your wind forecast tomorrow night, these winds. Now this is tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. They're going to be going anywhere between 30 to 40 miles per hour. That's going to bring in warm conditions from the south, relatively warm. It's going to pump our temperature up on Wednesday in the first part of the day up to about 70, 73 degrees, somewhere in there. And then notice by noon, this directional shift, a cold front is going to sweep through. And boy, it's going to live up to its name. So here's our numbers. Tomorrow we go 62, we'll go 73 on Wednesday. And then by Thursday, dry for the home opener there for the Nats, but it's going to be cool. I mean, we're back down into the 50s for high temperatures. The other thing I want to point out is on Wednesday, a few thunderstorms are possible. We're actually in the marginal risk from the st uh, Storm Prediction Center, meaning an isolated strong storm or two possible. So that's the next couple of days. Then yet another system on Friday, bringing it down on Saturday into the 40s. It's interesting.